on today's entrepreneurial edition of Fixing the Money Thing. God is faithful to bring you opportunities. Mm -hmm. The problem is people don't recognize opportunities. An entrepreneurial mindset is someone who sees an opportunity that other people don't. People make the mistake of looking for money yeah. with not realizing how money shows up. Yeah. You know, I need a million dollars. No, you need a million dollar idea. How to be faithful in business. Now on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a financial, chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, you're living like many of my people are, living in debt. He said, I want my people free. Your financial freedom is closer than you think. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life, defeated his debt, and set him free. Financial problems, they're slow death. We're trying to change the way you think about money. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and we are talking today about business. In fact, my new book, Open for Business, these principles changed my life, and they will change yours as well. And I've invited my son, Tim, to be with me today as yeah. he has walked this out personally and enabled to do things that are amazing. And he's going to tell you about that, how they came to pass, and how the principles that we teach about walking business out literally changed his life as well. Yeah. Tim, great to have you today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here today. And I've got to watch firsthand all these things happen. But everyone has dreams, you know? I mean, we talk to people at church and travel. Everyone has dreams, right? Yeah. Someday I'm going to blank. I want to have this. I yeah. want to have that. I remember, now you like the outdoors. You've always loved to hunt and fish and love the outdoors. And you married a girl that does well. Yeah. And I remember you guys talking that someday we want to own a multi-million dollar piece of property with, you know, 100, 200 acres that uh, we could own. That was your, that, uh, that's yeah. all I heard. That was your dream. But, at the, time, want, yeah. but at the time, Tim, you didn't have multi-millions right. so, of dollars. So how do you get, how do you get from where you are to take those steps, right? That's why I'm at, that's what you want to find out. That's what you right? got to find Let's out. find out. So God is faithful and I, I am just so thankful, but God is faithful with what? And that's what people miss. God is faithful to bring you opportunities. Mm -hmm. The problem is people don't recognize opportunities. Like what does an opportunity look like? And if you haven't seen it yet, guess what? You probably don't have eyes that recognize opportunities. That's right. And that's the trick. So, you know, I, I grew up in our household. You guys are entrepreneurial. And so I'm thankful to you and my mama uh, for, for instilling that in us. But what is an entrepreneurial mindset? An entrepreneurial mindset is someone who sees an opportunity that other people don't. Right. And, uh, you know, being faithful with those little steps led us to where we are now, which we're super thankful for. But I go back in time and I look at some of those little, you know, those little moves that seemed, uh, it was a lot of work and some of the things. I'll just tell, tell my story real quick, right? Um, you know, my, my first house that I bought, I was praying for and believing How God How old were for. you when you bought it? I was 22, maybe 23, somewhere in there. So not that long ago. But uh, yeah, so praying for... A house, and um, you weren't married yet. I wasn't married yet, and uh, this this house listing, my realtor sent me and said, "Hey, it's listed with the wrong address." Now, when you list a house, if you put it up with the wrong address, it's not going <laughs> to go well for you. By the that's way, right. <laughs> listed with the wrong address, wrong square footage, wrong information, wrong town. Wow. Okay. And, and that's so three strikes no, you're out. No one had hardly seen this house as it was sitting kind of on a, a quiet road off, you know, where you you wouldn't drive this road unless you yeah. lived over there. And, uh, you know, so that was the first opportunity. Now, this house needed some work, and I, we, we put a lot of work into it. Alicia and I then got married uh, a, couple, a year later, Now, you I bought it I bought for, it like, what, 30000 th $34,000, $34, which, uh, you it know. It was a foreclosure, I it think. It was a foreclosure. Yeah. It set on the market, and every month it set on the market, they slashed it by $10,000. no one showed up. Because they needed to get it out of there. <laughs> no one showed up. So, yeah, yeah it went from you know, $150,000, you know, uh, mortgage that they needed to satisfy. And they ended up selling it for $34,000 to me, which was great. Now I needed a little bit of work. And I think that's where sometimes people miss, they miss it because they're looking for their dream to come mm -hmm. and knock on the door and say, Hey, I'm your dream, but it's, it is your dream. It's just not matured yet. It's a step. 
people make the mistake of looking for money yeah. with not realizing how money shows up. Yeah. You know, I need a million dollars. No, you need a million dollar idea. Yeah. And so you were recognizing that this first house and you like building. I like working with you my like, hands. Yeah, and so you did a great yeah. job with that. I built Legos as a kid and then graduated into <laughs> RC airplanes. I was yeah. always building, building something, something, if yeah. you remember. So, so I you had this house, that. and yeah. so tell us what happened with the house. Well, so I, I, you know, we were, we were faithful to do the odds and ends and the small things, and we did it on a, on a tighter budget. So if you have a tight budget, which a lot of people do, it's okay. You can, you know, you can be prayerful about those next steps. And a lot of times when you're wanting a big house, walk around your house and how's your, the, the house you're in look. Uh, have you painted the walls? Do you, do you take care of it? Some of the odds, and I mean, there's stuff you can do that doesn't require a lot of money. It requires a mindset and someone who's going to live in a nice house is going to be in a nice house, right? Yeah. So it's interesting. We, my wife and I drove by a house the other day that um, a friend had sold. And, you know, I had been at that, so I've been in that house before years ago, and I, it's just trashed, trashed. And you're just, we drove by, you're like, what have they done to that place? Because it's a mindset issue. Yes. And maybe your house, maybe you got to get some things in order. So we stepped it up, right? So I, I sold that house. So I, I, you know, I had a lot of equity in it, right? I sold it and bought three houses cash with that money. Well, hey, wow. I fixed those three houses up. I sold those three houses, uh, you know, for a decent chunk of money. And I bought a, an apartment building, right? And that apartment building's worth uh, well over a million dollars today. And I paid 190000 for it, right? Mm. So it's, you know, that's a great investment, but it needed work, right? So now you're in that same, so you take on a $34,000 house and you sell it for, you know, 160000 And now you take that 160, we bought three more houses and we fixed all those All needed up. help. All yeah. needed help. And you just kind of keep whatever your hand finds to do, right? As, as long as you're, you're, seeing opportunity. Mm -hmm. it's, so bought the apartment building and then I bought our, our other house, the one we, we sold more recently. And um, so I, the one that I bought more recently, I actually want to show pictures of that because it's uh, most people sh would and should run the other direction. Yeah, this house, your mother so, was like, <laughs> he down. actually bought that. <laughs> and I don't think you're even going to call it a house at that point. Right. So this, uh, whatever leftover of a house. <laughs> most of those things go off the rails and that's just the reality, right? When you buy a fixer upper, it, there's going to be a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So yes, mama, you were right. I should have tore it down. You don't know that till you start tearing into it and you're committed at that point. But we here, so yeah, check those pictures out, right? So the house is literally caving in. And um, so we bought this house and I, I bought it for the land value, right? So they sold it to me for what that, the, the mm, land yeah. was worth. I paid around 80 grand for it. This is going back five years ago, four or five years ago. And uh, you know, some prices have changed significantly since then. And, uh, but you know, we lifted it up and we reframed parts of it and we added on to it and we did, we did a lot, of, lot of the work and we did it cash, right? And, um, you know, but that $80,000 house, I sold that for over 600, you know, almost, almost $700,000. So these little baby steps, you know, are, I mean, have you ever had $700,000 in your bank account? Well, you know, it, it, what, it didn't happen in one go. It started with being faithful to paint the walls in the first house and, mm -hmm. and making the most of it. And keep in mind, this hasn't been our business. You know, so I want to kind of point that out. I, uh, I have full-time other responsibilities and jobs and, and such. This has been side, you know, something that you do on the side when you go home and say, hey, let's, let's paint this room or let's, let's do this work here or let's lift the house up on stilts and yeah, put well, a new foundation under it. Yeah. So, you know, opportunities are around you and you probably have those opportunities in your life and they may be really small. Now you may have arrived up here and those opportunities are maybe a little more intimidating and it takes that step of faith. So, you know, we sold now that house and we bought, bought our, our dream farm of, you know, a lot yeah. of, a lot of land and a lot it was of spaces, 170, 172 acres, 72 and, acres, yeah, five two barns houses on and it. multiple houses on it. And, and now we're and, starting over and well, now you have work to do again. Work to do. Yeah. But you already have a plan, and everyone talked to you. Okay, this is I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna rent this one out. I'm rehabbing that one, and yep. we're gonna do that one here, and then we're gonna build our dream house on top of this big hill. Right. You already have the plan. See, that's the difference. You already you know how the thing works. Yeah. And in the process, you're thinking about how to monetize everything yep. along the way to get to the dream. But most people don't even dream, Tim. Right. They they, don't. they they have a dream, but it's not a dream. 
Yeah. A dream is something you move towards. They, they've given up on the dream. They, they well, have a dream, but they just give up. They don't do it. People misalign some of the, the realities of a dream. A lot of people's dreams that they dream are the reward of their vision. And that's where now we get into this little bit of a tug of war because they say, well, what's your vision? Because the dream you have is the reward for mm -hmm, your vision mm -hmm. executed. And that's where then it gets hung up because they don't have a vision. They don't have it. And, uh, you know, so a vision is something you do that's going to, you know, here we are, we're, we're adding value. So if you don't have the add value mindset, whether it be at your employer or your relationships or any area of your life, then you're a taker. And takers... Yeah don't get rewarded because they're always taking. It's the ones that are creating a vision because that involves other people. That's right. And so I really, I really do encourage you. Uh, David fought the lion and he fought the bear. Then he fought Goliath and then he was in the palace. And most people want to go straight to the palace. That wasn't David's heart. David saw a need and was willing to say yes at each step of the way. He was, he was never petitioning to be king when he was out uh, no. tending sheep. That wasn't his heart. He was just being faithful with the assignment. And so I really encourage you, if you don't have a lion or a bear that you have, and I'm not meaning realistically. Literally, yeah, not literally. <laughs> but if you don't have those, those back stories of, okay, that, that, that was a, a lion or a bear that we were faithful and that we defeated, that's going to lead you to the next step. Maybe take a, a piece of paper out and even write those things down. And that's going to, first of all, testify of God's faithfulness when you were in those conflicts. But it also might, re you might recognize that you haven't had as many of those steps of faithfulness along the way and trying to just jump to the front of the line, at, you know, try to, trying to arrive up here isn't where you're actually at yet. Let's, um, that's good. Let's bounce back to the beginning though, yeah. because I think that most people have given up yeah. on dreaming. First off, they don't have time to dream. Secondly, their to-do list is already maxed out and they're already overwhelmed. Yeah. Number three, they can't see themselves in their dream. In other words, I always have a saying, if you can't see it, you can't seize it. Yeah. They, you see yourself in the picture of that house. You have the blueprint. You see it. But so many people cannot see them. They, they can admire that. Right. Oh, I'd love to have that. But they can't see themselves in it. They can't see them right. in that picture. To them, it's an impossible. So because they don't think it's possible, they discard it. They're not motivated to even examine how right. would I get there? Right. I should ask questions. I'd like to get, let's find out how to do it. And this goes back to way back here, way back here where you're saying, David is a young man and uh, you were a young man and you, you saw these things happen, but they can't pick up on the ideas right? because they've already given up. In fact, I always say it this way, they say no before they ever even consider the yes. We've trained ourselves to say no before we even consider asking how, right? because we're just so maxed out. And so, like you said, one of the first things you want to do is to write things down, be faithful where you're at, because what happens is your own personal capacity to get more done, uh, enable you to vision past where you're at, being faithful, you know, to organize, clean your bedroom. Yeah. You know, you, you're faithful with the task in front of you. You learn how to handle more responsibility, which enables you to have a bigger vision. But so many people today don't, yeah. uh, don't dream. They, they just, they're satisfied to watch someone else's dream on the big screen right? and plot. And, you know, and that's great. That's awesome. But never see that they're meant to be in the game, not yeah. just watch the Super Bowl. Well, I think one, one thing you, I think you've said this this past week and you've said it multiple times. If you don't like your house, sell it. Yeah. If you don't if like, you don't like your You're job, just, yeah. then where are you supposed to be, right? Like people, uh, it, it is interesting how many people will just settle in a, in a, in a yes, situation, yes. a place, in a house that they can't stand. But there's no movement towards realizing something different. And I think, that, yeah, you get, you get that vision kicked out of you. And you're, you're trained to say no. Trained to um, say no. You know, now we're not, um, we're not saying that you don't use wisdom and you just, you know, but, but you have to know where you're at and, and what's going to get you to where you're supposed to be. And uh, even though taking that next step, right, of each time was a little bit intimidating. Oh, it takes so faith. The, the apartment building, let's yeah, tell that story faith, real yeah. quick. Um, I had been praying. Now, I'm, I'm on staff here at a, at a ministry, right? Now, we wanted to give more and be be able to give more to the ministry. Well, the best way to do that is not to go to the board and say, hey, can I have a raise? So Alicia, my wife and I, we, we prayed and said, how can we, how can we be 
be uh, in business because business is where money comes from. And how can we have business? And my wife, now I had been reading books on real estate and we had been, you know, we had just done those, the, a right. handful of those houses we had sold. And uh, she's like, well, let's buy, let's buy an apartment building. Now, this is probably the way most, uh, especially us guys, but we, our response. Well, that, you know, that's stupid. That, you know, or uh, I think my response is, babe, like, People like us don't go out and buy apartment buildings. Like, you got to have a lot of money to do that, especially million-dollar properties. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but her words, her words stuck with me, and I, I, I recognize that barrier was wrong. Because why say no before I even look? Yeah, I know it. And yeah. so, you know, that's, it's, it's a normal thing. And thank God for, for he brings a spouse into your world <laughs> yeah. that slaps you around a little. <laughs> Alicia, <laughs> wake up, wake up. Yeah. No, Alicia's uh, super sweet, but her words were in my mind when I drove by an apartment building that I could tell was being underutilized, right? It was, it was run down a little bit. You could tell that it was mostly vacant. Well, that's an opportunity mm. because people were looking for rentals. So why would this, this property have vacancies when P, it, it's a mismanagement issue? So I, um, I actually drove by it and, uh, oh, man, that would be a great property to buy someday. And, uh, those words that were in my mind, well, why don't we buy an apartment building? And I was just thinking, someday. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. why not? Why not now? Why not at least, at least if I find out what the guy would want for it, you know, because he's gonna want, he's gonna want seven, eight hundred thousand dollars for it, I'm sure, right? I don't have that kind of money. I turned around and I drove back and I got the number off the sign. I left a message, so I called and I left a message on the, the number. The gentleman called me back. And he said, uh, you know, hey, I do have some that are for rent if you want to rent one. And so I told him, actually, I'm not interested in renting. I was curious if you thought about selling them. Now, he, in his words were, I was just thinking about that this morning. So as we were praying for opportunity, he was thinking about selling his property. And now in my mind, I'm still not seeing this as an opportunity. Because what about the money, right? (laughs) You know, you still, and that may be where you are. There's this grand opportunity and you're like, oh, but yeah, I just don't have what it takes. I don't have the money. Oh, well, maybe next time. So I said, well, let's, let's meet out there. I'd love to, 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 to see the property and you can show me around and let's talk about it. So I meet the gentleman out there and he goes, well, you know, he showed me around. He goes, it needs a lot. It needs a bit of work. I'll tell you what. He's like, I'll, I'll sell it to you for what I paid for it. 20, I was a 25, 28 years ago. <laughs> and so he sells it to me at, you know, it just a, truly a blessing. And I needed a lot of work. And, uh, you know, so that was, we, we were like, let's do it. We sold, and we sold the house and bought that and, and kind of, um, you know, kept moving on. But now that's a lot of work, right? Now you have an apartment building. Yeah. Now you have multiple, multiple rooms that need done. And you're learning at each step of the way. You're taking on bigger, bigger projects. You know, now to replace windows isn't five or six thousand or whatever we spent on the house. Now it's thirty or forty thousand, right? These are bigger projects that you're funding and you're figuring it out. But you know, just seeing God's faithfulness in your in the small steps in your story, exactly. you know He's gonna continue to be faithful. And so when you say yes and you know, once again, you gotta know you're in the will of God and where you're supposed to be and your heart was in the right place and you know, you make that leap. But yeah, so we have we have a lot of these great stories, but all of that is um, just a testimony of God's faithfulness. Yeah, and of you said yes. Bringing opportunities to us and us. But you looked through. for the opportunity. Yeah. There wasn't even a sale sign there. That's right. I, yeah. mean, I mean, one day, uh, this is back in the, in the I, eight when the crash occurred, I had a multimillionaire. <laughs> I was visiting him yep. on the beach. He said, Now, if I were you, I would buy this property. Let me show you. He walked me down the beach. Here's this property for sale. It's foreclosed on. It has two houses on it, on the beach. On Florida, the beach. On the beach. In Florida. Oh, man. And I see the price is like 690000 Oh, my gosh. And yeah. I thought, man, I don't know. We had a lot of stuff happening, you know, and I just thought, you know, we just got a lot of things going on. <laughs> two houses on the beach on for 600 On the beach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just we had so many money going out to different directions. And I, 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 I don't, I don't want to, I just, I got money going everywhere and, you know, didn't think right, right. right. Well, now, you know, today <laughs> this property is worth millions. I'm right? gonna say, yeah, you can't touch millions. anything near, near so the beach. God has for brought, he's brought those same things to me, and I, I didn't recognize all of them. But I didn't recognize enough of them. Right. 
But every time I recognize one, you learn. Yeah. Okay. I need next time. I'm going to be a little more. I, I think when we get to heaven, there's going to be a log no. of all these moments. It's like that was a God moment. That was a God moment. Tim, you got four percent of the God moments, which you know you're still doing better than a lot. I think. There's going to be a lot I got of moments some of them, that but God I missed a bunch of them. Waving, saying, "Hey, this is an opportunity." I missed a bunch. Yeah. You can ask my wife; she has a list of all of them. They had a, you <laughs> had a you had a wealthy guy telling you to buy yeah, this property. Yeah, millionaires. Hey, this is this is going to be worth millions, you know. And I just, yeah. but uh, Drenda has uh, we've had that same thing. She's now you need to get you know she has wisdom. You, this would be a good buy, you know. Yeah. And I didn't miss all of them, but one day uh, a man of God told her he said, "Listen, I'm trying gut from God." I'm trying to bring you houses and lands and blessings, but you're not receiving them. You guys need to change how you think. Yeah. And so, you know, coming out of uh, a history of poverty and debt, you know, you learn to be st- you know, stringent, right? Yeah. You learn to be. And, I, and God had to teach me, listen, son, you know, I got, I got things for you. Don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to hold back. Just make sure you're in my will, in my step. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as we began to do that, uh, you know, things we grab some of those deals, yeah. but the Holy Spirit will illuminate those yeah. and show you. But it does take that to mindset. An entrepreneurial mindset is looking yeah. for those kind of opportunities, which goes back to my book, Open for Business. Uh, our life was changed by business. We were in debt six years, in ser- nine years seriously in debt. And uh, our answer was, was business. Your answer was business. Yep. I mean, so many people... And you were even, that's part-time. You, you know, you had a part-time business. Yeah, exactly. That you was don't not, have to make this huge jump yeah. into a full-time business. But you know, And, and you know, the, my rental properties, that's a, that income just keeps coming in, though. Every month. So it wasn't just a blessing then. It's a blessing Still now. Blessing. And as real estate in our local area is exploding, it's even a greater blessing, right? Yeah. Our, our, uh, our market's been blowing up around the area. And so holding that. And, uh, you know, if you have been trained in dysfunction, which we all yeah, have, by the way. that's a good term for it. Here's the, here's the reality check. You probably are walking by opportunities that God's sending you every day. And I really encourage you, get open for business. Get some of those. I read, I read a lot of different books. And uh, that also helped to equip me to say yes yeah. to that apartment leap because I had some history in reading books. So I encourage you, read books like Open for Business and start renewing your mind. If you came from a home that was a, not an entrepreneurial home and there was a restrictive mindset of everything was a no, you're especially going to have to dig yes, yes, into yes. God's word and start renewing your mind yes. to, to God's word and, and seeing the world for his. Because God's creative, right? And if his spirit's exactly. in you, you're creative. We're creative. We have, we have a, a creative spirit, meaning we create uh, good things. And so, you know, you need to be creating or doing something. And so, you know, get, get some paint on that house. Look yeah. for the opportunities around you. Get some things in order and recognize that God's going to keep taking you in this Amen. journey he started with you. Well, you can get the book at uh, our website. And also, I want to encourage you to come back here. Same place, same time. We're going to continue talking all the next few days about business, open for business and about your future and how God wants to help you understand that you don't have to just wait around for money to show up. Yeah. You can create it. It's called business. See you next time right here on Fixing the Money Thing.